again. Good evening. So you can tell I was talking away and nothing was moving. <laughs> Thank you so much for your presentation. Honestly, a lot to learn about how blockchain can make the world a better place. And yes, you can absolutely share the link to your slides. Please do drop them in the chat. My apologies. I couldn't get on fast enough before the stream ended. So thank you so much. Please do pop your link to your slides into the chat function. And of course, if you post them on Twitter, we will retag, share, etc. So there we are. Perfect. I'm loving our room at the moment because it seems like I'm the one with the tech issues. Um, thank you for joining us on screen. Um, the next uh, uh, talk will be all about sustainable food systems via blockchain technology. Over to you. Mastered yet how to be able to see my slides and also be able to talk. So uh, I'm going to, I know we only have 10 minutes, so I'll try and keep it as fast as possible. My name is Jean Bièvre and I am the CEO of AgriLedger and I'm going to take you through a journey with me. So a little bit about me. Um, I actually have been a banker. I love traveling. I love food. And I have to say the latest um, has been a challenge. So I have about 25 years in banking and treasury, having worked for some of the largest organizations in the world, such as General Electric, before they crashed themselves, uh, Hewlett Packard, uh, GE, uh, so, yeah, GE, and also RBS. And about 2015, I was leaving RBS, going into work, with an identity management company. And someone started talking to me about this thing called Bitcoin that you could get your machine to do. And I was like, Ugh, not interested. But then I got the first week, the opportunity to go to um, South Africa and learn more about what this wonderful technology could do. And the project that I was looking at was one where it would involve young girls and teaching them about uh, financial inclusion by giving them these fractionalized mechanism to be able to pay for their music and learn about those things. And that system would also allow them to be able to um, basically have their medical information. And But the best part about this was really the learning. So in case nobody knows, 16-year-olds are the ones who rule the house. Girls mostly rule the house, as we all know. They got to go see their friends, which means also all that curiosity to, allows them to tell their parents about how to use the technology. And that set me on the way. And I was, oh, my God, I've been doing this thing called straight through processing, which is making sure we put system so we don't waste time. And even though we still hear a lot about payments being part of the blockchain, for me, it was information. If I can know that something has been done right the first time and everybody can trust that it's the right thing, then we don't need 100 people or 10 people or three people, one person or two people. And also because I came from identity, I was very fascinated by the whole idea of privacy. For those of you who don't know, X509 is a basic of the cryptography in uh, blockchain. And I call it identity on acid because it's a whole bunch of X509 where X509 is for uh, the uh, identity. So this set me on a way and this has taken me many places from China, Australia. And with me up in my hand, that is me speaking to the farmers in Haiti where we started our project. So uh, for those of you who may have heard of Haiti, it's in the Americas, in the Caribbean. It was the first island dis discovered by Christopher Columbus when he was looking for India. That's why it's called the West Indian, because India, because he thought he was in, he had landed in, in, in India and figured out later, oh no, no, I went West. And Haiti, has been in the news many a time for bad things such as weather, 
um, hurricane, earthquake. But what you may not know about Haiti, it was actually the first and only Black nation to gain its independence by force. Uh, also, it is in that strip of land in which we go around the world, which is extremely rich with nutrients and has wonderful coffee, cocoa, and this mango, which is found only in Haiti. I'm trying to figure out still where it came from, but hey, don't know. So um, about uh, two years ago, I received a message through LinkedIn. So my thing is never say no to LinkedIn because you never know what somebody's gonna have for you as a deal. It was somebody saying, am I interested in applying for this uh, call, which was put out by the Ministry of Commerce of Industry of Haiti based on a grant from the World Bank. And what this was about was really how do you de-risk the value chain? Not so much the supply chain. How do you also create an opportunity for farmers to actually be receiving a greater part of value? And how do you also create that responsibility across the value chain? This is where blockchain comes in very well. So between, we went live in February, but in production in May, and there were six runs of mangoes going up to uh, the US. And that was about six runs. About 38,000 were were taken down the tree, but on, unfortunately 23,000 made it. But still that was, 750% increase in income for the farmers. It was 14 cents on local market, what they could have gotten. They ended up on average getting $1.86. That's after everything needed to be paid, the broker, the transportation, all of it. So the take was 40,000 and 68% of that went back to the farmers. Now, this is what is coming next. Haiti has avocados galore. And this is what we do with the technology. The farmer needs to have harvested, gets harvested, gets a message telling him, you can, after he's made a phone call and says, oh, I got some. Which comes, avocados have been received. And then he's told along the journey, communication they they have reached port-au-prince they've been on the road to to miami to the u.s we found a buyer this is how much a buyer is paying and by the way this is your take now the customer who receives it in the u.s is this beautiful avocado i mean i'm telling you they're bigger than my hands uh and not only will we be looking to give them information as to where the journey so we can know how long did it take this fruit because yesterday i was in a conference somebody was talking about an avocado which he knew had been for two months do you want two months of a frozen cryptogenic fruit no you want fresh fruit and you want to know also that the person who has labored to this has received and another thing is we talk about carbon footprint we will be able to tell the carbon footprint of the farmer and also how long it took this avocado. Did it come by plane or did it come in a big shipment coming in uh, from on a boat? And finally, I don't know about you, I'm getting tired of trying to figure out how am I going to do this thing now? If you can actually have recipe that we can provide. So this is where we look at the customer experience of the customer being able to see his avocado. So Zaboka Pao, it means your avocado the nutritional value, who was your farmer, and finally, the recipe. Now, obviously, I couldn't be happy just with food. I was thinking, you know, when COVID started, I had actually been talking and thinking about the fast-moving customer good. But when COVID happened, one of the things I kept hearing is, these vaccine or no, these tests are no good. And actually vaccine just happened last week that the flu vaccine for Guernsey all got rejected because the temperature wasn't kept properly. So that got me thinking of how could we actually 
excuses because if I can tell an avocado or a mango coming from the middle of nowhere in the mountains of Haiti to you as a customer, why couldn't we use that same thing working with the manufacturers to basically not only keep track of every single test, but also the journey of the test. And it's really using at that point information which is and technolo technology which is already available to then provide that trust. And this is what really for me, the blockchain is about, it's about trust. How do you create this in the testing? And then we're looking at really the supply chain of the future vaccine, because it's going to be important to make sure that you don't buy a whole bunch of vaccine like we did at the beginning in the UK. We bought 20 million worth of uh, tests and we had to send them all back, which meant there wasn't enough to actually use because we had to wait for new ones to come in. Now, what this is really about is, in my point of view, what I call chain of custody. And also for me, the blockchain is really an infrastructure, a foundation. So we need to be able to use other technologies which are available to us, AI, machine learning, because now that I know the data is good, I can trust the data. And now that I can actually be able to make learnings, I can then adjust the system accordingly. And this is what we're doing at AgriLedger. Thank you. Are you okay there? That was absolutely brilliant. Absolutely. Um, thoroughly enjoyed that content. Thank you very much for sharing with us this evening. And for everyone watching, you can meet uh, the brilliant speakers this evening during the networking session. So please do go find them and have a little chat. So now what we're about to do is we are going to switch rooms if you would like to. We have one more talk here in the tech room. Just one more. So if you'd like to switch to the career track or the restructure and sustainability track, you think I'd remember now we're on day two, um, please do switch once the presentation ends. Okay, if you have any questions, drop me a chat, uh, a message rather, in the chat function. Should oh, we sorry, take the question? My apologies. Or no? You can take the question, yes. We've got time for one question and then we will do the switch. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sure. Uh, I'll take Fiona's question. Sorry. <laughs> uh, what happens if you have a rogue actor at one point in the blockchain reporting? Can that individual be identified? Or can a rogue actor in real world have his blockchain fixed? So this is why I say it's about using multiple technologies. So what we are doing is we're working with the government of Haiti and the World Bank. So everyone which is participatory is registered. So in ways, this is why machine learning is going to come in. Because if you start seeing activity, which is not normal, then you start saying, OK, there is some, someone which is not acting. An individual doesn't have his or her own uh, blockchain. And that's the beauty about it is that you can just append information to not rewrite what has happened. Um, and it is important for me to really talk about the fact that we need to say technology supports the growth. This is about technology allowing people to be prosperous through trust. Because now I trust the person who's carrying my things. I know they will get paid what they're supposed to and whatever expenses are, are clearly defined and I will get it back. So it's why it's, it's, this is the beauty of this technology, but you can't just not look at the data and analyze it. And this is why data scientists, I'm actually very interested in the Python because you need data scientists to say, what is, it's like tea leaves. What are the tea leaves telling me? I hope that helped. Thank you. Shanti coming back. Wonderful. <laughs> I know. I'm here. It's good to see you smiling. We're all still smiling. We're all very well. Thank um, you so much. <laughs> um, really riveting presentation there and such good um, knowledge about how blockchain can make things better. So 
Okay, now we're going to do the switch. <laughs> so if you want to get some, if you want to stay with us in the tech chat for the last talk, please stay in the room when I end the presentation. But if you'd like to join the career track or these restructure and sustainability track, please do that. Okay, I'm about to close the chat so you can go off and switch rooms.